continue talking about Joshua. Especially now that we are talking about going outreaching. Last week we talked about being strong and courageous. Say be strong and be courageous. Be strong and be courageous. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So we are talking about Joshua and our pastor had mentioned a little bit about the wall of Jericho. And today we will talk about the wall of Jericho in our time. Joshua chapter 6 verse 1. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are there with me, say Amen. amen. Um, now Jericho was securely shut. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. And none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city once. This you shall do for six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams, horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make long blasts with rams' horns, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Praise the Lord. Amen. The wall of Jericho. The Bible talks about uh, Joshua here. Joshua had taken over. Moses had died. And it's so hard for somebody like Moses to be replaced. Hallelujah. This person, Moses, had brought the children all the way from Egypt. He had parted the Red Sea. He had gone to the mountain to be with the Lord. In fact, God had said, everybody else, I speak to them in visions and dreams. But this man, Moses, he is the only one that had seen God face to face. Amen. Now this guy is dead and the people are very devastated. Yeah. People are complaining at the, on the, at the foot of the mountain and they don't know what to do. The Bible tell, tells us that God tells Joshua, now my servant Moses has rested. Now it is your turn. And I can imagine what Joshua was feeling like at that time. Maybe he felt inadequate. Like how? Who can replace Moses? The man of God. The same, same people that had talked, that had discovered Moses, that had gone and gotten the idols to worship. This is the man that had clapped his hands and manna came from heaven. This is the man that God had used so mightily, but now he is dead. And everybody is crying. The same children of Israel that had murmured about him were now crying, helpless. But then God calls Joshua. God calls Joshua at that particular time, in that divine moment. But Joshua was available. Joshua was available to be used by the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So now before this, they had seen, the, you know, they had seen Jericho afar. But God told them, you have to go and conquer this Jericho. But before even they went to conquer Jericho, if you look at Joshua chapter 3 verse 7. Joshua 3 verse 7. The Lord told Joshua that this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel. That they may know that I am, that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priest 
who bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When you have come to the edge of the water of Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us God told Joshua that he was going to magnify. I have these glasses of mine, and they magnify the letters when I see. You know, it, you know, it, it, it makes the, the letters to be bigger so that I'm able to, to see. So the same thing God told Joshua that he was going to magnify him. He was going to exalt him because God understood that people would probably doubt Joshua. People would probably not take him seriously. People of Israel might not, you know, might try to, to, to you know, to match. Okay, Moses was like this. And now Joshua, how is he going to take us to the promised land? We thought Moses will take us all the way. But the Bible says that God told Joshua that he will magnify him. And today, in the name of Jesus, may God magnify you. May God exalt you before the people. As you even go out to outreach, may God exalt you that people do not look at you like that small person. Amen. What can this person from Africa tell me? Today, God is going to magnify you the way he did for, for Joshua. I understand that sometimes when we go out there to preach or to outreach and to win souls for Christ, you might feel inadequate. That is exactly what Joshua felt. Because who? Moses was the man. Who can, you know, who can match up with Moses? And he understood that. But God saw that ahead and said, I will magnify you. And Joshua was to help the children of Israel to conquer Jericho. Hallelujah. So the point that I wanted to let you know is that God will exalt you. Do not be afraid. Joshua 1 verse 9. Be strong and be courageous. Amen. All you need to do is to be strong and be courageous. Just know that, yes, I can do this. What God has said about your life, what God has said about you, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And God also tells Joshua, that every Joshua chapter 1, it tells in verse 3 every place that the soul of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Amen. That's what God told Joshua. Amen. Today, in the name of Jesus, you've come to Minnesota not because, not because of anything, you know, it's not a coincidence. Amen. You cannot say, Oh, I just found myself in Minnesota. God has something for you. Because he has told you that every place that your soul Amen. steps upon, Amen. he has given it to you. Amen. It is not a coincidence. Yes. It is not, oh, my cousin was in Minnesota and I found myself here. Yes. Oh, so do you know what? what? Uh, 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 uh. God has given you this land. Yes. And where your, your, your foot, your souls are stepping on this ground. Yes. They are stepping here in Minnesota. Yes. Our papa has told us that this place, this Minnesota, yes. this is where revival is going to start. Yes. And there is no coincidence that you are here. Yes. Now go and possess. Yes. Go and possess the land. Yes. Go and possess that which God has given you. Yes. In the name of Jesus, because he himself, he has said, every place the soul of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Yes. He has given it to you. Yes. He has given it to you. His own mouth of Jehovah has said that. This is where your children are. This is where you know, your business is. This is where you are. It is. You need to take possession. Amen. Take your position today as you possess the land. Amen. And the Bible says that to, with your own eyes, you will see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Just stand still and see what God is going to do Amen. for you. But you cannot be left behind. When revival is taking place and is being rekindled in Minnesota, your feet are here. Amen. You will not be left behind. Amen. You have to possess it. You have to possess the land in the name of Jesus. He says again in, in Joshua chapter 1, this is um, verse 5. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For these people you shall divide as an inheritance to the land I saw to your fathers. Be strong and be very courageous. God continues to just strengthen him. Just be strong. Just be strong. Have good courage. Be brave. Because 
I have given you the land. I have given you the land. He has given you the understanding that you need at this time. He has given you the wisdom. He has given you the weapons and the tools that you need. The Bible says, blessed is God of Abraham who teaches my hands on how to fight. You already know how to fight. God has empowered you. Pastor has been talking about empowerment. We're being empowered. Now what? We have been empowered. Now what? Are you going to sit down with that empowerment that you have? The anointing of God that breaks every yoke that you possess? Do not underestimate yourself. You shall possess the land. You shall possess the land. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says we are the gatekeepers. We are the one, the watchman that watches the gates of where we are. We have to possess the land. We have to stand still, to be strong and to be courageous because God is on your side. And when God is yeah, God is going to teach us how to wage war. Proverbs 11, 11 verse 30. Proverbs 11 verse 30. Proverbs 11 verse 30. Can you please put it up for us? Okay. The Bible says, the fruit of the righteous, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. I will read it again. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who, and he who wins souls is wise. Is your fruit righteous? Is it a tree of life? Are you winning souls for him? And he says, he who wins souls is wise. Are you going to be wise in his kingdom so you can, you can win the souls for Christ? We gotta be wise because if that means, what is the opposite of, of not being wise? Of wise? Foolish. Foolish. In other words, that's what the Bible says. If you are not winning souls, we are foolish. You are foolish. But he who wins souls is wise. So guys, I am here to talk to us, including me. I want to be wise. And we, and as I said, we have that covenant. Remember what Peter did? He walked in, in, the, in water. But then when he realized that men don't walk in water, that is when he began to sink. We, can't, we, we have to realize that we have greater power. And he said, greater things you will do. He, he will give you what you need to do. He will give you what you need to, you know, to, to, to how to, you know, he will not give a hard situation that you will not be able to handle. So don't look at your surrounding like Peter had to look at, hey, people don't work in water. And that is when he started sinking down. But had he just focused on the Lord, the priest, the order and the finisher of, of, of your salvation, he would not sink. Your boat will not sink. Amen. Because we have to focus on the Lord. Don't look at your situation. Don't look at your situation. Don't look at just physical things. Because life, life is very, very, very spiritual. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, today, I just want to, you know, to encourage us. Next week, first of all, I just want to appreciate all of you that have taken uh, part um, with prayer and fasting for, for outreach. And as I said in the beginning, we've been empowered. Amen. We've gone to the mountain. Yes. We've gone to Zion. Yes. We've gone to the place of God. Yes. Now we are strong. Yeah. Now what do we do with that strength? Mm. What do we do with that empowerment? What do we do with God already? In fact, if, if, you, if you realize um, about the world, God gave them instructions. And he said, in the sixth day, this is what is going to happen. But they, that is what is going to happen. They believed God. So it was, it was not told that the all things might happen. But God says, this exactly the, this is what you do. This is what you do. And on the sixth day, this is what happens. And they knew beyond doubt that God was going to do that. Amen. Because if they had seen it with their physical eyes, they might have said, you know what? This place is securely tied. There is no way. How, how can we even go in? Mm. 
So as you go around, as you, the ark of God goes around you, as the covenant of the living God just encompasses you, you will do it. Amen. You will do it. Just be strong. Just be strong and be courageous. Have courage. Do not be dismayed. The enemies you see today, the wars you see today, the principalities and powers in this area you see today, yes. those who look down upon you you see today, yes. you shall see them no more. Amen. Just stand still and see the salvation of God. Amen. Stand still and see what God is about to do, even for our church. Amen. We are the lighthouse in this city. We keep on talking about that we are the lighthouse in this city. How are we a lighthouse? If we are just sitting, we need to go. We need to go, guys. We need to walk, to go and do what God has said concerning this. The prophecies has to be fulfilled concerning even uh, JCCTC. All these walls have to, to come down in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. All these walls have to come out in Jesus' name. Amen. They have to fall down. Because if, if I'm not going to, you know, but if I had looked it in a, a different way and say, you know what, why would I even be waiting for seven days to come? Because they had to wait for seven days. It, they did not succeed. They, they, they did not, the wall of Jericho did not fall the first day, the second day, the third day. They would have given up. It just doesn't take it just like that. You follow the instructions and God will do the rest. According to his word, and promises that he has given you. He says his promises are yeah amen. and amen. amen. And he never fails. So these people would have said, Kwani, we are going seven days. That is too long. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You cannot just, you know, we cannot be discouraged. And that's why God tells him, be strong and be courageous. He was, you know, people would have just said, Joshua would have said, you know what? Why would we even struggle for these many days? And this land we are not even going to. We are not, they did not live in Jericho. He might, they might have, you know, had that. But they followed instructions and they were strong and they were courageous. In Psalms 34, he says, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord and he answered me. And he delivered me from my afflictions. Amen. As we seek the Lord, he will deliver you. Amen. As you go out, to, 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 to work for him and to, to witness to people. He will deliver you from your own situation. As you fight, as you worship him, as you praise him. I'm even reminded of, 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 of uh, Joseph when the brothers had conspired to, to kill him. I think Reuben said, no, why don't we sell him? But then also Judah, when he saw the traders, he said, why, you know, why don't we just, you know, sell him instead of, instead of killing him? What, how will it profit us? And we know Judah was from a tribe that were worshippers. So as you worship him, as you praise God, the deliverance of Joseph came through Judah. There is something God is about to do. There is a shifting even in the spirit. That God is touching every heart and every soul from children to, 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 to the old men in these end times. Amen. In the book of Joel, he says, in the last days. And he's, these are the days. And God is looking for a people that would worship him Amen. in truth and in spirit. Amen. Are we there yet? Are we those people that God is looking for? Amen. Are we those people that is looking God is looking for in these end times Amen. that would worship him in truth and in spirit. Amen. That would say, Lord, here I am. Use me. Amen. I'm ready to go. There is nothing that can stop me. I'm going to go. The rest is up to you. Are we there yet, people? Are we going to work for him? As I finish, I just want to uh, encourage us and um, ask any of you if there is anybody that is ready to be used by God. Amen. Is there anybody? Amen. I watched Titanic movie and it was very emotional. 
And I remember there was a guy with a torch, whatever, a spotlight in the middle when people were shaking in the middle of the ocean, and he would say, Is there anybody there? Is there somebody? Is there somebody who's still alive? Is there somebody? And today, the same voice I'm asking you, is there anybody that is willing to go? Remember, God is saying, Who will go for us? Yeah. Is there somebody who will say, Here I am, that we can go out next week and make this part of us to reach the, the souls? Those people, they cannot, they cannot do it themselves. They cannot just, you know, they don't know. Somebody needs to reach out. Somebody reached out to you, that is how you got saved. You just did not get, get up one day and just, somebody had to teach you. Somebody had to witness to you. Somebody had to hold your hand. Somebody had to guide you. Even if somebody did not tell you they invited you and you came, you heard the pastor preach, you got to know the word. Just know that somebody, there's somebody somewhere who has never heard. There's somebody somewhere that has never been told Jesus loves you. There's somebody somewhere that is still hopeless. But there's hope in the land of the living. As so long as we are still living, 